Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard here. I'm here on the Tennessee River, and I'm fixing to fish a creek that I've never fished before. Now, on this channel, I do a lot of that. There's a lot of places that I'll go into and shoot videos, but uh, today is, is sort of a... Uh, I want to show y'all what I look for in a creek situation, okay, to find and locate crappie, to make sure that they are crappie in a creek. And creeks, just another pattern to catch crappie. And uh, today, I hope that uh, we can catch some fish. I don't know anything about this creek. But the first thing that I do when I enter a creek off of a river system or a lake situation is I look for shad. That's the number one priority. Uh, let's see if we can locate some shad. Very important. If there's no shad in this creek, we're not going to have a video. I simply won't fish where there's no bait fish. So stay with me and let's see if we can catch crappie. Out of a creek I've never fished before. Okay, let's look at our little depth finder right here. This is a Hummingbird 160. It's a cheap depth finder, but it's very, very accurate. Uh, I have a different one on my other boat uh, that shows a little bit more detail, but what I'm looking for right here is shad. Okay, and right here, you can see right here on the bottom, there's a little school of shad right there. That's how they show up on this particular depth finder. That's probably thread fin, the small ones. The water temperature, as you can see, or the surface temp is 49 degrees. And I'm on, I'm in this creek a pretty good ways already. And I can see that the water is going to average eh, 16 foot right here. But as I go on in the creek, I'm going to try to establish the average depth of the water okay here's a couple fish right here showing up at 13 feet and that looks like a stump or something or a, or a log laying on the bottom all depth finders show up objects a little bit different but this little model right here is very very accurate <coughs> All right, here they are. Y'all see those shad on the screen right there? They're anywhere from about 10, 10 to 12 feet of water. Okay, we've got a lot of shad in this creek right here. No further than I went back in here, it's just a deep creek is all it is. It's a feeder creek. All right, now what we have to do now is figure out what we're going to fish with. And where? All right, folks, I'm back up in this creek quite a ways now. And I've established the fact that we have shad. There's quite a few shad in here. Uh, no farther than I went back. So I'm reasonably, I bet you, on down the creek, there'll be more shad as you get towards the back end. Now, this creek goes back up in here quite a ways. And already I see the the cover that I'm going to have to fish is no doubt going to have to be these blowdowns or laydowns, okay? A lot of these trees I've noticed are connected. They've, they're off the bank and actually connecting to the bottom. A lot of them are just off the bank and, and they're floating. They're suspending themselves. Just uh, new fallen trees or trees that hadn't been fell for quite a while I mean for a brief period of time probably a year or so now in crappie fishing those two type of different trees if y'all can understand what I'm talking about the trees that's connecting to the bottom oftentimes in these creeks are the ones you need to focus on and the trees that's fell that's not yet sunk to the bottom that are or sort of suspended in the water column are the trees sometimes you need to to focus on so there's two types of trees in this creek 
And I'm going to have to figure out which one of those is the most productive. Okay. Now, there's no question in my mind that this creek has crappie and other game fish because there's a lot of shad in the area. So, what I'm going to do, being I'm going to fish trees, is uh, I have four pound test Mr. Crappie on, just my normal casting outfit right here with a Saron uh, Garcia reel. And uh, a 132nd ounce ultimate jig head, which I've put my own weed guard in here. I've fished with this a lot mm -hmm. under docks. Well, when I'm fishing trees, this is the bait of my choice. 132nd ounce. And I'm using a Bobby Garland uh, jig. Real simple. Now, the water clarity in here is relatively clear. Not real clear like I have been fishing in some areas of, the, of this system. But it's pretty clear, so I'm going to go with blue. And for my attractant, I'm just going to use slab sauce. And what I'm going to do, the average depth so far is around 14 feet right through the middle of this creek. So these trees that's laying over in the water is over around 10 and 12 feet of water, I assume. So what I'm going to do is start fishing mid-depth, mid okay? I'm going to start fishing about 7 and 8 foot deep to start off with. That's how I'm going to figure out where these crappie are. If it don't work, I'll fish a little higher in the water column or even lower. That's the most important thing is to catch that first fish so that fish can tell you where they're at. It's that simple. That, that when it comes to creek fishing, I hope I explained that right. It's that simple. It's a, it's a pattern one of the simplest patterns that I know of is creeks. So let's get started. So here's a tree right here. See, see how it's fell off the bank. The root system had gotten weak. Okay, and it's at about a 45 degree angle right here. Now, those limbs are down in the water, maybe three or four foot. Oftentimes, crappie will lay right up under those limbs See, this is the only structure or cover, excuse me, that these crappie have to relate to. Crappie are structure oriented. Now, I mean, they're going to be in, around, or close to structure. And trees are perfect when it comes to, to creek situations. So what I'm going to do, and the reason I chose this weedless head of course is because i want to actually bump those limbs to trigger strikes so i'm going to get in here real tight like that that's the first cast of the day i'm going to let it sink halfway about seven or eight foot feet deep well that one's caught up on the limb okay it's falling right now as it's falling i'm watching that high vis line crappie a hit on the fall many times okay now i'm just gonna bring that back real slow i'm gonna hold my rod tip up and i just got a bite <laughs> first cast and got a bite but that wasn't a crappie bite it could have been a bluegill or a white bass or something like that Is all I'm doing right now. I'm letting it fall about seven, eight feet deep. This jig will fall about a foot a second. And I'm just letting it fall towards me. Now I'm going to fish several of these trees like this. And if it don't work, then I'm going to start casting. I'm going to mix up the way my presentation. In other words... There's another good looking place right there. There's a, a limb hanging at an angle there and I'm gonna follow that limb down. And there's a bite. What do we got right here? That was the fourth cast in a creek I've never fished, folks. And I caught a crappie. You know, that's understanding how they hold 
on cover is real important. There he is. He's not very big, is he? He's probably about nine and a half inches long. Little black crappie. What about that? That fish come a lot quicker than I thought he would. And that fish bit about six foot deep, by the way. Very important fish right here that I caught. Let's let him go. He told me what I need to do. I'm not gonna catch these fish today the way I want to. I have to let the fish dictate uh, how they're gonna be caught. Six foot deep on the first fish. Let's catch another one. I've circled back around on this top right here and I'm gonna make the same presentation uh, but not up in the tree, Richard. Golly, bum. <laughs> I'm not quite in there where that fish bit. This is fishing, the real deal. I'm gonna let it fall down there about six feet, bring it back. What I'm gonna say, what I'm doing right here is I'm gonna see if there's some more fish holding right there. And it's right there. Y'all see that limb, the trunk of that tree, that biggest limb that's back there. See, it's at about a 45 degree angle. That fish was holding on it. Now this tree right here don't have another limb that's in the water like that. Let's try this tree right here. This is about the same situation right here. There we go. Look here. Now this is a little bit better fish right here. I've done found some crappie and I've done it quick. There's no problem. Let's flip him in here. That's a pretty good black crappie. That was a definite boom. To figure them out that quick, it usually doesn't happen, folks. It usually doesn't happen. It takes a much more work than that, especially in a creek you've never fished before. But all these creeks are the same. It's the same thing that I do every time when it comes to fishing these creeks. Let's let that pretty black crappie go. All right, folks. That was just about as quick as I've ever come into a creek situation and start catching fish. I feel fortunate for that. But uh, now what I want to do is leave those two trees alone and I'm wanting to find trees that set up off the bank similar to those, okay? Limbs that's going down in the water and stuff like that uh, on the rest of these trees. And also, in a creek situation, what I'll do is I'm wanting to find the average depth and come up with the average depth of this creek that's right through the middle of this creek is what I'm saying. I hope I'm explaining it right. And I'm going to go back up in here, well, I don't know how far, far as I can, and uh, see what all's in this creek. I mean, it's maybe possible that the, that the crappie are set up way farther down the creek. There could be some little feeder creeks that, that's hitting this creek right here. It's a narrow creek, so I can't... I'm not going to disturb the creek. I'm not going to crank up my motor. I'm going to troll back up in here because it's so narrow. Okay, I'm being real stealthy right here. There's one. There we go. There we go. Fish is fighting right here a little bit. He's a little better than what I've been catching. sort of hooked. Now well, let's try to get him in. Yeah, a lot better fish than I've been catching. I was starting to worry, folks, if I was going to catch a good fish or not. Back up in here in the, on this new creek, and I did. That's a good crappie anywhere. Good fish. Of course, they're all good fish. I mean, 
you never know about crappie fishing as far as size goes. If you're catching crappie, you're doing it. Let's let him go. Go on back. All right. Uh. Now that son of a gun like the I'm talking about like to snuck up on me. Look here, what a crappie. Come on in here, boy. Look at there. My goodness. Always trying to sneak up on me. That's a good fish right there, folks. Let's let him go. Hey. That one deserves. Let me put that. Folks, that's about the end of it. Uh, caught a lot of fish today. New area. Uh, and I'm going to stress it's very important to know for a fact that there's shad in your creek. Especially in the fall and in the winter. Just scope it out and make sure that you see shad. And the rest of it... It's just time on the water. The more you fish for crappie, the better you get. It's a sport second to none. Recognize the type of trees that you're fishing, whether they're connected to the bottom or if you have five or six feet of nothing but limbs uh, in, the, in the water. In other words, a lot of times they'll suspend on those trees more than they'll use the, fit, uh, the, the trees that's connected. Uh, the first two or three fish that you catch is going to tell, tell the story. So it's more like uh, time on the water. Just keep that bait wet. Keep her trucking. And I want to thank you all very much for watching. And... Oh. Good. Hurry it!